Shall you... I prove it? Go on then. Yeah, shall I prove well, it? You look at a lamb and you think you want to eat it? Yes, let me, uh, let me explain. So the brother says that God didn't design us to eat meat. I have canines for a reason. It's to help me tear flesh. That's why I have canines. If I was only to eat, if I was only to eat vegetables, I would just have incisors like all the um, omnivores, uh, sorry, all the, what's the, what? Thank you. All the herbivores on the planet, they just use incisors, teeth that go like this. The only animal, all the animals that eat meat have canines. Human beings have canine teeth and you've all got canines as well. And the reason for it is just like the lion and the chimpanzee and all the other omnivores and carnivores, you're supposed to eat meat. Can I go next? Yeah, go on. Right, this brother has compared our teeth to a lion's teeth. Correct. Can you compare our teeth to a lion's teeth? Yes. What, in comparison to size? It's not about the size, it's the type. It's, it's the, the type. shape. Okay, when you bite an apple, how do you bite into an apple? Bruv, bruv. Answer me the question. Bruv, one second. When you bite an apple, how do you bite into an apple? With my teeth. Right. With, with my incisor right, teeth. with these, right? No, with these. You bite an apple like that, yeah? When you're chewing your... With these, with my incisors. Yeah, you use Not with my yeah? canines. But the thing is, bro, if you're a follower of Jesus... Let me finish, bro. That's like you said, just right, right, right. So you said we've got the same teeth. That's rubbish, all right? Because if, we you do. Try, if you try to bite a cow as it was alive, try to eat it, eat, it, eat it alive, would you be able to do it? Would your teeth sink through the cow? Uh, no, not, no. Like, not like a lion. Probably no, not. No chance, no chance, all right? But there are plenty... Another, another thing... But I, I could do that to a bird. Another thing. I could, I could rip into a bird with another my teeth. Thing. When you chew your meat, do you use these or do you use your back teeth? Use my back teeth. Which proves that I'm supposed to eat meat. No. Because I've got the teeth to do it. You've got the back teeth. Are the back teeth flat or are they, are they canines? They're flat. Exactly. Yes, exactly. So you just contradicted yourself. No, I haven't. Huh? The back teeth. They have ridges. They're, they have ridges. They have got... Yeah, but has a lion got... Yeah, but has, has a lion got a teeth like that? Yes, they do. Yeah. I know are you saying yeah. our teeth are the same as lions? No, 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 brother. What you're, what you're, essentially is saying that my logic is flawed because of the size of the teeth. Yeah, it's not. Well, bro, I, bro, bro. Some people have bigger feet than others. It doesn't mean oh, yeah, that because one silly. people have bigger. Silly. I'm not the one who made a silly argument. You're I'm just working silly. with a silly argument you're that you made. A lion's teeth to a human but his, teeth. Let's, and that let's come back to the scriptures. Let's come back to the scriptures. No, no, one second. No, 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 no. No, no, bro. Let me finish, bro. Bro, no. I'm going to reply. I'm going to reply. I don't like to raise my voice, but if I have to, I will. The fact of the matter is, bro, is that. You're trying to use the Bible to argue for something that the Bible doesn't teach. Thou shalt not kill. Teach it. Thou shalt not kill is accurately translated. Thou shalt not murder. No. And you've already said that you have no evidence that you can present to prove that it means thou shalt not murder. And I, one second, thou shalt not kill. prove it. Prove it prove now. It. I'll see if I can bring it up on Google. Right, go on. Bring it up in Google. So. The fact of the matter is, I also, I've already shown, you witnessed this, you witnessed this. Did I not show him from Exodus that Moses commanded the Levites to go out and kill? Did I not show that? Yeah, but not kill the innocent, not kill the innocent. Thank you, so thou shalt not kill doesn't mean don't kill anyone or anything. Thou shalt not kill, even if we use the word kill, means thou shalt not murder. Because Moses, who brought that commandment, commanded in Exodus 32 the Levites to go out from gate to gate of the camp, killing those who had worshipped the calf. Yeah, but the innocent, Thank you. you don't kill, you don't touch the innocent. And then I showed you also, from the book of Leviticus, chapter 4 I think it was, the offering for sin. You were there, you were there. What's the offering for sin? A bull. A bull. What's the offering for sin? A bull. A bull. You heard that. One, one day, and you, do, do, you know when you eat your bull, do you put its blood on, on your dog? One second. Do you sacrifice it like One that? second. Exodus, Leviticus 4. He said it was just one day. He's wrong. Thou shalt not kill. He's quoting the Chicago what? What do you want then? What should I do? King James? I, I want, no, I want the Hebrew. Pull out the Hebrew. Because it tra me translates as thou shalt not murder. Right. So let's have a look. In Exodus chapter 4, about the law of a sin offering, thou shalt not kill. Wikipedia, pull up the Hebrew. Wikipedia isn't an authority in any argument. 
If you're talking about linguistics, you've got to pull out the Hebrew, not Wikipedia. Can you find it then? No, hard. I'm not the one who's making the point. The, evidence, the burden of evidence well, is on you. Thou shalt not kill, he yes. changed it to murder. Because so that saying, is how it's you're translated. Jesus wasn't intelligent enough to know the difference between murder and killing. So one second. Murder in, in, murder in the dictionary applies to humans. Killing applies to everyone. Jesus specifically said, thou shalt not kill. No, prove yeah, it. Not thou shalt not murder. Prove well, it. I've brought it up on here. You're prove saying, it. You're saying it's not good enough. All you're doing is pulling up Wikipedia. Thou You've got to kill. find me in the Hebrew, the Hebrew word in the commandment that says, thou shalt not kill. And then translate it for me from a respectable source. It says, thou shalt not murder. And if you had paid attention, brother, I showed you in Exodus 32 that Moses, who said, thou shalt not murder, then commands the Levites to kill to in kill, the people not, of Israel. Not the innocent animals Hold on one second. Got, got no, no sin at all. He said, not the innocent animals. But yeah. then I took him to Leviticus chapter yeah. 4 yeah. and he said, listen, listen to what it says. On one specific day, on one specific no, time. No, no, listen. Not every day you've got He's not listening. No, I've heard you've got Leviticus chapter 4. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the sons of Israel. If a person sins unintentionally in any of the things which the Lord has commanded not to be done and commits any of them, if the anointed priest sins so as to bring guilt on the people, then let him offer to the Lord a bull without defect as a sin offering for the sin he has committed. Does it say on a particular day? No. Any day he has committed a sin, he must do this. For the sin he has committed, he shall bring the bull to the doorway of the tent of the meeting before the Lord, and he will lay his hand on the head of the bull and slay the bull before the Lord. Is that how you eat your food then? No. So you bring a bull personally We've done all of this. No. You, now, now, I, now I understand that you're not actually listening to anything I'm saying. I'm listening, but I'm not, Because I'm as not a Christian, as a Christian, I don't believe in sacrifice for the atonement of sin. As a Christian, I believe that all the animal sacrifices pointed to our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the only sufficient sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins. And all the animal sacrifices pointed to that truth. Our religion as Christians has no concept of animal sacrifice. But not having animal sacrifices isn't the same as saying that you have an obligation to be a vegetarian. Those are not no. the same things. No, I just follow Christ's law, thou shalt not kill. So I'm going to prove to you that Jesus ate meat. Got it. Okay, so what we need to do is just find out the laws for the Passover. Anyway, just because Jesus ate meat, it doesn't mean you can eat meat. Why Jesus, not? Jesus walked on water, can you walk on water? No. There you go. So just because Jesus does say, it doesn't give you the authority. So we just need to find the passage about the... Do you know what happens at the Passover? From what I've read, they slaughter the animal, they put the, the blood on the door, and it's got to be eaten within a specific time. That, that happened not, at the first Passover. But how, how, how do the Jews the celebrate the Passover? What do they do? So the Jews reenact the Passover. They eat a lamb, they wear sandals on their feet, they have a staff in their hand, and they eat unleavened bread. And it's a reenactment of the Passover. They do it every year and God commanded them to do it. Yeah. Right, wait, did Jesus celebrate every, the Passover? Every, every year, yeah. Did Jesus celebrate the Once Passover? Once a year they do it. Did and Jesus people, celebrate the Passover? They're righteous, yeah? Did Jesus it celebrate the Passover? The right to eat. Did Jesus celebrate the Passover? Yeah, 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 yeah. He did celebrate the I Passover. Believe, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. No, you're not sure, let me prove it oh, to you. I believe, I think no, right, you don't, I no, you're not no, sure. No, no, I, I want you to be you. sure. Right, no, I want you to be sure. Look, Luke chapter two, preparing the Passover. Listen to what it says. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is called the Passover, was approaching. The chief priests and the scribes were seeking how they might put him, our Lord, to the death. For they were afraid of the people. And Satan entered into Judas, who was called Iscariot, belonging to the number of the twelve. And he went away and discussed the chief priests and officers how he might betray him to them. They were glad and agreed to give him money. So he consented and began seeking a good opportunity to betray him to them apart from the crowd. Then came the first day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Yeah. So Jesus celebrated the Passover, he ate the lamb. 
So Jesus ate meat, therefore we Christians have no basis not to eat meat. It doesn't mean that we are obliged to eat meat, but we can't argue from for vegetarianism from the Bible. So in Luke chapter 22, did you say? That was Luke chapter 22. Yeah. Yes. I've proven... Jesus ate meat now. Yes, Jesus ate meat. Now, what, do the, what does that mean? What's the significance of this? He ate meat on the Passover, get it right. Great. On that one particular day, on that one particular sacrifice, he ate it. So now am I okay to eat meat once a year? Once a year, on a, if, if it's been sacrificed and you're doing it, you're putting the blood on the door and you're following the exact rules of that way, then yes. But now the Lord Jesus but, Christ is our Passover. Exactly. Yes, so it's, a new, it's entering into a new covenant. And you've done it on a specific day. I let him show you. Let yeah, him. the brother's absolutely right. This is what we're trying to tell you, bro. Oh, sir. The reason why we don't do the Passover lamb now yeah. is because Jesus is our Passover yeah, but when lamb. When you did it, it was once a year, right? No, I've shown you already from Leviticus 4 that it was every day. All right, let's get back to Genesis. I'll give you every seed, herb, and fruit for you for food. What's that about? <laughs> okay, right, he wants to go back to Genesis. How do you understand that Jesus had me? No, I'm not having it. You still don't believe it? I might have had it, maybe, maybe on that. I don't believe it. You don't believe I it? I think it was too pure. It was just read to you now. Yeah, he, he, maybe for the Passover, because it was done in a certain way, it was done once a year, it was done in a specific way, yes. But I don't condemn having KFC and bacon buttons and getting meat from all these sort of houses, you know what I mean? Right, one second. It's, it's a different. I'm going to, pro I'm, going, no, I'm, pro I'm going to sink him from Genesis. He says, we go to Genesis. When Adam and Eve committed the sin that God said don't commit, what did they do? Ate shape from the apple, didn't she? Yes, but what did they do after but that? I reckon, I reckon, I'm, what did sorry, they do? All right, okay, I'm going to talk to you guys. No, listen, listen. You asked me, I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, but you're not, listen, you're not answering let the question. No, 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 no. And let me finish Go my on, point on, and then reply. Let me finish my point. When Adam and Eve committed the sin, they covered themselves with fig leaves. When God pronounced his judgments on them, God made them coverings from skin. So, and it was a testament to the idea that in Genesis, that animal sacrifice or that the sacrifice of blood is the covering for sin. Read Genesis chapter 3, verse 20. After God had pronounced the judgments, now the man called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all the living. Yahweh God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. Tell me, if in Genesis we were not meant to sacrifice animals, why did God make animal skin coverings for Adam and Eve? Can we get back to the seeds and nuts when God said, I'll give you seeds and nuts to eat? What was I that about? Know that yeah, I don't know thank that. you. Oh, no, no, not her. I'm All right. Not Can we get to that after? So, so, so the point is, Genesis is the first proto-evangelion. The first testament of the evangelion is in Genesis. God says to the woman that your seed shall crush the serpent and he shall stamp on his head and the serpent shall bite his eel. It is the proto-evangelion. It is the first declaration that a woman and by a woman's seed only, not a man, that the salvation of the world will come. And God establishes animal sacrifice at the beginning in Genesis because God takes away the fig coverings that Adam and Eve had made for themselves to cover their sin. In other words, their fig coverings were not sufficient and he lays down the life of animals to give them a covering because of their sin. Yeah, that's and Adam, then, that's Adam and, Eve, and yeah. then Abraham sacrifices a lamb to for the life of Isaac. Yeah. And then Moses institutes animal sacrifices. Yeah. And then Jesus Christ offers himself as a sacrifice. So Adam, sacrifice of animals. Abraham, sacrifice of animals. Moses, sacrifice of animals. David, sacrifice of animals. Jesus the true sacrifice for forgiveness of sin. And then the Muslims say that Muhammad taught the same religion, but they don't have any concept of animals being sacrificed for the forgiveness of sins. But Adam did, Abraham did, Moses did, David did, Jesus did, 
So who's teaching the same religion? The prophets descended from Isaac or this Arab Bedouin who never knew the gospel, never knew the Torah, never knew the covenants. I've shown you in scripture, Adam, David, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, sacrifice, 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 animals, animals and Jesus himself who is the true Lamb of God. There is no argument you, you can make biblically. Just because they've made one sacrifice doesn't give you the right to think you can eat what you want. Okay, he says that biblically I cannot show, I cannot show that we have the right to eat what we want. Yes. You still ain't gone to the seeds and nuts and, and the herbs and stuff. Behold, I'll give you, what is it? Seeds, nuts for you to eat. What about that? Come, Bob, what about that one? Right. So the brother says that biblically I cannot justify the idea that we Christians can eat what we want. Listen to the words of our Lord. This is our Lord speaking. Are you lacking in understanding also? Do you not understand that whatever goes into the man from outside cannot defile him because it does not go into his heart but into his stomach and is eliminated from him? Thus, this is what the gospel says, thus he declared all foods clean, all of them, pork, beef, Chicken, camel. Does he name all the, all, all the clean, all the clean meats in there? Are you so lacking in understanding also? Do you not understand that whatsoever goes into the man from outside cannot defile him? Because it does not go into his heart, but into his stomach and is eliminated. Thus he declared all foods clean. And he was saying, that which proceeds out of the man, that is that which defiles the man. For from within the heart of men proceeds evil thoughts, fornifications, thefts, murderers, adulteries, deeds of coveting and wickedness. How many Muslims have bitterness in their heart? It is that which makes you unclean, Perfect. not eating pork. The BLM today stole a sign that belonged to someone else. It is that hatred that made them unclean. Not eating beef. Brothers and sisters, it is what is in your heart that makes your soul clean or unclean. Not what you eat, not whether you do ablutions. Your wudu is useless. So if I was to eat a dog, would that make my heart clean? No. Would it? Jesus said it doesn't make you clean or unclean. So it doesn't matter what I eat. But it, and exactly, it doesn't but matter. If I was to eat you. So now, so, so, let us a fair question. Let me answer this question. So, what's wrong with cannibalism then? According to Jesus, all foods are clean. Jesus has relegated the question about what we eat not to ideas of ritual purity, but to simple questions of health. So, let me give you a very good health reason why you shouldn't be a cannibal. If you eat human flesh, the microbes, the diseases, the viruses that exist in that flesh, because they are adapted to the human being, can be transmitted to you. Same you can catch diseases by eating. Same as animals. Not true. Correct. It is. Not always it true. Is. Not always exactly true. The same. No difference. Not always true. That is the reason why we can eat pork and we don't die always of what, swine what, flu. What was, the, what was the requirements for Emmanuel's son? Was it butter, what was it, butter, honey? Bro, I've answered a lot of questions. Just ask me that, what was it? For, what, what was the, what, what, my, my Emmanuel's son, what was he going to eat? It was butter. Emmanuel, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, what, what, what was he supposed to eat? I've just shown you he ate lamb. Yeah, no, Luke no, no, no. 22. Well, originally, they said he's going to have butter, he's going to have honey, oh dear. he's going to have... Uh, did you hear that. when I read Luke 22? I've heard that, but have you what heard did, that? Do, what, did he, what did Jesus eat on the Passover? We've, we've gone through that. What? For that one specific day, we've said on, a, on one specific term, uh, on one specific sacrifice on the 
yes. Or maybe on that day, yes. What did he eat? But it doesn't justify, what did he eat? It doesn't justify what did he eat? eating it every single day. Brother, right? can, I, can I suggest to you? No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Menu. One what second. What was his diet supposed to be? It was the diet of a Jew, which included meat. Now, no, no, in no, terms no. of... It was butter. In terms of... Prove right. it. Then you were in prison. What are Babylon trying to feed him? Prove that the Emmanuel, Jesus Christ, was a vegetarian. Right. Prove it. Right. While well, I do that, can you tell me what Daniel in prison so, refused to eat? Daniel, I, I don't know. He He's probably that, refused like, to eat meat sacrificed meat. to idols. Yes. Sacrificed meat. to meat. idols. Meat. He refused to meat. Sacrificed to idols. Daniel, Daniel was on point. Sacrificed to idols. Babylon. Brother, can I... Well, one second. That, wait, wait, wait. I'm going to... Brother. Because this brother introduced me himself to me as a devotee of Jesus. I am. But I suspect Christ. that what is more important to you is not being a disciple of Jesus, but being a vegetarian. Ah. Because I'll if Jesus the reason, ate meat, the I'm a one second, brother, one second. Good. If Jesus ate meat as a disciple of Jesus, you can't argue from Jesus that we have to be vegetarians. You can argue for health reasons no, that we can. need to be vegetarians, but not, not for religious reasons. Thou shalt not kill. I'm going to give you another example from scripture, because you're arguing against scripture all the time. Acts chapter 9. You listening? Yeah, I'm listening. Okay. Doop, doo, doo, doo. No, not Acts chapter 9. Uh, I'm looking for Peter's vision. Do, 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 do. Brother, I encourage you simply to take seriously the scriptures. Do you take seriously the scriptures? I take Christ seriously. Do you take the scriptures seriously? Uh, Go on. Honestly. Yeah. Uh, I don't believe. I believe Christ is much bigger in this book. I don't think you can cover Christ in there. No way. So, are you saying that you don't take the scriptures seriously? Do I take them seriously? I don't take them literally. You don't take them literally. No. So what I hear, what I hear is that I believe the bits of the scriptures that suit my agenda no. rather than allow the scriptures to form my agenda. No, I believe in Christ, but I don't believe what? Christ completely. So you don't, you don't believe in the scriptures? Not 100%. So do you believe in the Gospel of Luke when it says Jesus ate lamb? Uh, from my understanding, it's probably not. not there you go. So his selectivity is based on his vegetarianism. No. So we've already established that Christ declared all food clean and so discussion about what foods we eat is now relegated to questions about health and environment. So there are good health reasons to argue that we should eat less meat. There are good environmental reasons to argue that we should eat less meat. But there are no biblical reasons to argue argue that we should not eat meat. Let me Butter finish. And honey shall he eat. Who? Who's it talking about? I yes, you pull up. Who, this is your who, verse. Who, yeah, your, your, pull it up. We'll come to it in you a second. Know more than I do. Ah, I'm my Bible. Bible. My Bible. I'm going to be honest with you, you know more than I do on, on the Bible. So, if so it bro, says here, butter and honey shall If you eat. say, in the set, in the set of where everything bro, is in place, if and, you say, and who they're talking to. Listen, bro. But, if you say, you bro, if you say that I know more about the Bible, in the set of where why are you trying to convince me from the Bible to because be a vegetarian? I'm not trying to convince you. It says butter and honey shall who? he eat. Who? Who's that? Exactly. He doesn't know. Who, 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 we'll come to that. We'll go and look it up. I see that. We'll go and we'll go and look it up. But let me just quote to you this verse. You're first. making that. You're giving me some jargon. This is the point. Yes, but who, bro? So, so let me just, let me just, let me just, let me just quote this to you. So Peter is one of the apostles. He was the leader of the early church, and this is his spiritual experience. This was his mystical experience as confirmation to the declaration of our Lord. Because our Lord had declared all foods clean, but, but Peter, all foods clean, but Peter was still behaving like a Jew. He had not yet let go of this idea that some foods were unclean. And so the Holy Spirit, the Panumater Zolentios, the Spirit of Truth that would guide the church into all truth as prophesied by our Lord in John chapter 16, say, does this. On the next day, 
as they were on their way and approaching the city, Peter went up to the housetop about the sixth hour to pray. But he became hungry and was desiring to eat. Everyone who's a Christian, shout! Desiring to eat! Desiring to eat! Desiring to eat. But while they were making preparations, he fell into a trance. That's a mystical experience. And he saw the sky opened and an object came, an object like a great sheet coming down, lowered by four corners to the ground. And there were in it all kinds of four-footed animals. Everyone say four-footed animals. Four-footed animals. Crawling things. And of the earth and the birds of the air. A voice came to him. Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Kill and eat. Four legs. Kill and eat. But Peter said, but Peter said, by no means, Lord. So who is he talking to? The Lord. The Lord. Who commanded him to kill and eat? The Lord. Kill and eat. But Peter said, by no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything unholy and unclean. There you go, there you go. And the voice from heaven said, the voice of the Lord, in echo of our Lord Jesus Christ, the voice of the Lord came to him a second time, what God has cleansed no longer consider unholy. And who was it that declared all foods clean? And who did it just say declared all foods clean? God. So Jesus is God. What can you eat? I can eat a dog, I can eat a cat, I can eat a rat, anything with four legs. Yeah? Anything. But, 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 to be fair, this means that the question about what we eat is relegated to questions about health. And I genuinely believe, I genuinely believe that there are good reasons to eat less meat. But they're not connected to religious reasons, they're connected to health reasons. So look after your bodies, because your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Brother, you have no biblical argument. If you see a lamb, you don't look at it, you want to eat it, you want to stroke it. That's your DNA, that's God's heart for you. So, brother, the brother started on the question. Put it in your heart. Jesus put it in your heart, the brother started on the question of the Ten Commandments. And before I came here today, I prayed about which books to bring. Earlier, I had a debate with a Muslim about baptism. God had told me to bring a book about baptism. I've just had a, a debate starting with the Ten Commandments, Thou shalt not kill. This is a book about the Ten Commandments. God said I would debate the Ten Commandments today. This is for you as a gift. God bless you, brother. Thank you, yeah. Thank you, yeah. Take care. Nice one, brother. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks, man. Wrap up, wrap up. Very, very nice of you, man. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I mean, I, I want to accept it, but I, I don't I, I want to be clear, you're not sure. doing anything wrong by being a vegetarian. Yeah, I know. What I'm saying is, I, Nothing. I, I want to accept this. No, it's your gift. Are you sure? Yeah? Yes! Yeah. I got it for you. Is it five pounds, It's, no, 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 don't I'll give me any money. No, no, money. no, no. The sacrifice is my honour. No, the you. sacrifice is my honour. Yeah, yeah. So it's my gift to you. Yeah. So in, no, 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 I don't want to accept money. You don't understand, in the Christian economy, being a blessing to others yeah. is a blessing to and ourselves. Peace be with you, sister. Yeah, yeah. Good for you, I'm glad. Thanks be to God. Not me, but Christ in me. Okay. No, 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 brother, give it to the poor. I tell you what, the next homeless person you see, give this money to them. Yeah. Yes, for me, do it for me. The next homeless person you see, give it to them. Cool. Okay. Thanks, yeah. God bless you. Cheers. Have a good day. Yeah. So in wrap up, guys, the brother, the brother who is a very committed vegetarian, yeah. argued from the commandment, thou shalt not kill, that this means that we Christians have no basis to eat meat. However, we see from the Old Testament that sacrificing animals is an intrinsic part of the Old Testament. God kills animals to give a skin covering to Adam and Eve, removing the vegetable covering that they had made for themselves 
in response for their sin. Abraham sacrifices a lamb instead of sacrificing his only son, Isaac. Moses, and Moses establishes the sacrificing of bulls for the forgiveness of sins. He establishes the Day of Atonement where a lamb is sacrificed for the forgiveness of sins. Moses commands that lambs should be sacrificed for the Passover in commemoration of the Passover. David sacrificed animals. John the Baptist went to the temple where animals were sacrificed. Jesus the Christ went to the temple where animals were sacrificed. One second, bro. I'm going to come to that. I'm going to come to that. I am going to come to that, bro. I'm going to come to that. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God that is sacrificed for the sins of the world. And when he died on the cross, the need for animal sacrifices that were offered day after day and year after year finished because the new covenant is the final covenant. Now that means that we Christians cannot sacrifice animals. Our Lord declared all foods clean by saying it is not what goes into the body that defiles a man but by what comes out of the heart that defiles a man. So when the Muslims have bitterness and anger and vengeance in their heart, as ISIS did, it has defiled them, not eating pork. When the BLM earlier today stole a sign that belonged to the feminists, their theft is what defiled them. Not whether they ate chicken or pork or beef, halal or kosher or not. Cats or dogs. Cats or dogs. The question, the question about eating meat is regulated to one of health. It is regulated to the fact that we as Christians are the temple of God and that God has made his tabernacle in his church. So you should look after your body. And if there are good medical reasons suggesting that certain foods are bad for you or certain drinks are bad for you like alcohol or drugs of any kind, then to honor the temple, then that means that you should not eat those things. You should look after your body. Muslims that talk about eating pork makes you unclean, but yet have hate in their heart, have missed the point of Jesus' teaching. Muslims that don't believe in animal sacrifice as being given by the prophets, or that the sacrifice of blood atones for sin, admit that Muhammad did not bring the same religion as Adam, the same religion as Abraham, the same religion as Moses, the same religion as David, the same religion as John, the same religion as Jesus, the same religion as Paul, the same religion as Peter. Their Muhammad, their Muhammad has nothing to do with the covenant or the God that is Yahweh. Amen, amen. Look after yourself. God bless you, bro. God bless you guys.